Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I am your host, and on today's how-to, this is kind of a part two because we're gonna be dismantling a bearing using a mechanical puller. Alan Porter, who was here for part one, he is with Coyo Bearings North America, Hi, and Tom. we just put this bearing on, and now we are actually gonna take this bearing off, and you're gonna show us how to properly dismount the bearing, am I right? Sure. All Thanks right. for having me again, Tom. Oh, you're welcome, man. Now, before we get started, though, remember, we got to have our personal protective equipment exactly. on it. So let's do that again. Uh, when we first installed this bearing, and I remember using my uh, dead blow hammer to use that, we mm -hmm. had all this stuff on, and we want to make sure, and if I remember correctly, we don't want to corrode or touch any of the shaft or the bearing or anything like that. That's why we're wearing our gloves, right? Exactly. Okay, so whatever the job calls for, make sure you're wearing your proper PPE. All right, now, what are we going to be doing here, pal? Okay, first of all, I wanna say that you typically do not want to reuse a bearing that has been removed by pulling through the rolling elements as we're doing today. This method should only be used when the bearing is going to be discarded. If a bearing is removed by other means other than pulling through the rolling elements, it could be a candidate for reuse. However, we would always err on the side of caution wherever to reuse that bearing. All right, now why it is important, why is it so important that we do that though, Al? It is important to do properly for safety reasons and you do not want to damage the shaft or another component. Also note these pullers can be used not only for bearings but also a host of other items like gears and couplings. All right, now we have two different styles of pullers that we see here on the table. What are the differences between the two? Okay, we have a mechanical puller as these two items here mm -hmm. and we also have a hydraulic puller. Your application will determine which one you use. A few special features of these pullers, which really helps prevent damage to the bearing and workpiece, is number one, the self-centering device, the center on the shaft, okay. and secondly, the arms adjust uh, themselves simultaneously, either inwards or outwards. Okay, so now if I'm holding this down, maybe I could like kind of do that and I like, get the stuffed animal and I, I could bring it out. It looks like a claw. Most likely. It? I like that. You know, Most likely. It looks like with this tool, removing a bearing could be a one-man operation. Yes. While it's always best to have a second set of hands to ensure safety, the self-locking mechanism guarantees the arms neither misalign nor deflect, making it possible to do by yourself. All right. Now, what about this net, though, that we have right here? That net is for ensuring that any components that may come loose during the pulling operation are contained. Now, once again, I see you have several different sizes with you. Now, how do I know which one is right for my bearing, my job, or my application? How do you determine that? Good question. It really depends on the size and the fit of the part you are trying to pull. Our tools are numbered based upon their maximum tonnage. For the mechanical, we have a 3, 5, and 8 ton, and hydraulic, we have a 4 and 8 ton. One should also measure the bearing and review the spreads and reach of the pullers. So we've sized the puller. Everything is going to be secure in just a second because we're going to put this on. Then what do I do next? First, we are going to install the puller on the bearing and the shaft and hand tighten. All right, now how do we do that? Okay, we're going to set this down here. We'll put the center in there. Okay. And close the jaws up. All right. Hand tighten it on the bearing. Okay. Now okay. assume that we have our netting that's coming up next. Yes. Next, we want to put the um, mesh blanket over the component right. and the puller to retain everything. Okay. Okay. Now, are we ready to go? Yes. Now that everything is properly set up and installed, we are going to apply pressure through the turning of the screw, or if we're using a hydraulic, we'd be pumping a ham handle. All right. You can use an impact driver, a wrench to turn the screw. However, today we're going to use a half-inch drive socket wrench with a 19-millimeter socket. All right. Now, uh, any advice while I'm uh, turning these screws? As you turn the screw, you want to make sure that the puller remains centered so that it does not will not slip off. So a few more turns. Hey. And I, there you have it. I caught me a bearing. I like that. Wow, that's awesome. That, that came right off. 
Alan, thanks so much for the demonstration, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. That was Alan Porter, and he is with Koyo. And uh, as you saw, we were wearing our PPE, our personal protective equipment, and you want to make sure that you wear the personal protective equipment that is right for your job. And if you have any questions with anything you saw here today, don't forget to contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location, and they'll be able to help you out. Hopefully, this will help you with your practical applications as well. And I also hope that you'll watch other how-to videos, like part one of this one of actually getting the bearing on, but there's other ones as well from Motion Industries with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks so much for watching today.